And also, it's a celebration of, of the shoes. It cuts across, you know, income, racial, um, geographic boundaries of all kinds. It's something that brings people together. Indeed. And it's just like, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm Andy Yoder. Andy Yoder? Okay. Yeah. And Andy's like, how, um, can you give just like a little background on, on your, your bio of yourself? And... I, I was born in Ohio, Northeast Ohio. <laughs> I started off going to college, but then I switched over to an art institute in Cleveland. And then after a few years graduating, um, I got myself into New York and stayed there 18 years and started my career there and then, um, lived in Vermont for about eight years, and now I'm here in D.C. for about the last, I don't know, six or seven years. Okay. And what brought you to D.C.? I was married at the time, and my wife um, got a job down in D.C. And then this opportunity came along to get a studio here in Northeast D.C., here at Stable, and, um, and that's, been, that's been amazing. How would you describe the body of your work? You know, I get asked that a lot, like, what kind of sculpture do you do? And the only thing I can say that's consistent is like the point of view. So the materials have changed very much from one to the next. Um, so a lot of times my ideas will start by whatever materials I come into. It really just follows the idea and the opportunities that come my way. What really inspires me is making something that people connect with. But so I tend to make things that are recognizable objects, but then use some twist in them. Because I like people to have that initial recognition and and connect with the work that way gotcha. but then and, and and then introduce use that um, to uh, get them engaged with the work and introduce other ideas uh, your latest yeah these things. works uh -huh. which are absolutely amazing <laughs> so come in and partake of, of some of this sneaker goodness <laughs> here <laughs> And you know, I'm sure a camera, can. right? I can be. From a standpoint, like standing back here, like yeah. from a camera perspective, I'm sure people will think they're actual real shoes. But Andy, can you kind of go into what these actually are in, in the process of how you make these yeah. beautiful works of art? Sure. Um, these are all paper sculptures, and 90% of them are made out of things I've found in recycling bins. So if I pick one up, like. Um, like this one. Well, this one's made out of a Lululemon bag. And I, I start with some paper Amazing. to bake the sole. And then I, I cut pieces out and I just piece it together. The bag I had to spray onto other pieces of paper, spray mount it, spray adhesive. But the handles of the bag are the laces. Um, this one here is made out of a, this I didn't find the recycling. I ordered, it's a commission for a chemist. He asked me to make him a sneaker from the periodic table of the elements. So the chart is there with the pieces cut out of it. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of um, wow. a little bit of the, of the thing. Um, that is amazing. You know what I did was, um, there's a whole story behind these, but to actually make the shoes, I ordered a pair of Jordans online, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I took tracing paper, and I, uh, with a lot of trial and error, I created these templates, which are, if, if you exploded that shoe and took mm -hmm. the parts, mm -hmm. then these are the shapes that I came up with. So then I trace these, I'll take a package like, um, like for instance, uh, this box I found, and I could make, oh, I, I, could take, I could take this template and I could say, well that one works really well with the shape there, the way that hose is going around oh, like wow. that. Or I want to feature like the logo of the craftsman. Mm -hmm. So I take like this long piece here. This is goes at the, at the bottom of the shoe. So I would say, okay, let me take that and put that right along Let's there. Right? So I keep that that logo there. Because a lot of what I'm doing is I'm just sort of hitching my wagon to all the expertise that went into making these logos, these designs. And in such a way that it actually is designed to get people's eyes on the product. So I'm sort of like taking advantage of that and saying, well, you know, let's get our eyes on the, on the sneaker, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it, it sort of brings up issues of like, well, you know, consumer culture and, and how what we wear sort of helps identify like 
what we want to put out there as an image, you know, how we want to present ourselves. That's right. I discovered that shipping containers, about 1,500 of them fall off of ships every year into the ocean, just dump right off during storms. And 30 years ago, five of them fell off and 80,000 Nikes fell in the ocean. And then what happened was they actually float. And as the months went by, they started washing ashore on the, uh, the coast of Oregon and Washington. So of course what happened next was um, people got themselves in the business of collecting these things, networking with each other to match them up, you wash them and resell them. And um, it's, it's so cool how resourceful people are. That oceanographer heard about this and he started collaborating with the beachcombers and he was able to create data that led to this amazing study that, that, uh, that helped us understand the ocean's currents. So from a, what you might say was a kind of a disaster that happens every year, um, he made something good come out of it. And then I thought, wow, that is, I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna make these sneakers, you know, because that's just too cool. When I started it, um, I was just doing like white paper like this Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, the staples will look like stitching and, and that'll be good. And I thought, well, let's do the Jordan 5 because that was introduced the same year as the spill in 1990, gotcha. 30 years ago. But then I thought about like seeing like dozens or hundreds of these things. And I thought that is just going to be so visually boring. And mm -hmm. also the staples don't work very well as stitching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then the... Luckily, I had what you might call a light bulb moment, mm -hmm. and I thought, recycle, reclaim packaging out of the dumpsters, you know, mm -hmm. because you get the color, you get the, um, and it's, it sort of echoes the same story, you know, it starts out as commodity, it gets dumped, it be, it's trash at that point, but then you pull it back out and you're making it, reconverting it into something that's, that's, that's fantastic and beautiful. So um, the same way they did with the shipping container to, to create that gallery. Indeed. It's just like a recycled giant, a, re, a giant recycled steel box. Mm -hmm. So it, it all sort of like when things align like that and they sort of reinforce each other or you have these repeated patterns that um, echo each other, um, that's when I had the feeling that I was onto something pretty cool. And also to present a sort of a message about what our effect is as consumers on the environment without being preachy or, or wagging your finger at people because we all know you know we're not we're not good stewards of the environment but everybody's got message fatigue in terms of like you know how what the harmful effects are but to present it through sneakerhead culture was was a new thing and also it's a celebration of of the shoes the shape comes out differently depending on the materials. So now this one was made from another poster from that same pile as the flamingo. And this is uh, a poster of Matisse and his cutouts. It's that body of work he did at the end of his life where he, he had paper silk screened and then he cut it with these giant scissors and had them pasted to the wall with the help of his assistants. So you're taking high art and you're making, you know, something from not low art, but consumer culture out of it. And I just, I love that slamming those two kind of opposites in a way together and coming up with something that, I don't know what he would have thought of it. Incredible. I mean, the form of these shoes, to me, they're just like, they're spectacular as shapes. You know, I think that's part of the, the reason that, that sneaker culture is such a, is such a cool, huge phenomenon. Absolutely. It cuts across, you know, <laughs> income, racial, um, geographic boundaries of all kinds. It's something that brings people together Indeed. and it's just like, it's amazing. So it makes a great vehicle for um, like other messages. Yeah, this one was made from supplies I ordered out of the bookstore, the online uh, bookstore from Auburn University. I love it. Out of <laughs> how many pair would you say you've created? And if you could pick maybe your five favorites <laughs> right yeah oh because boy because each one there again these are works of art well a lot of artists will tell you that their favorite one is the one they just made but mm -hmm. um a couple things happen um i do have some favorites um but also as as so often happens as you do something more and more you get better at it so mm -hmm. some of the earlier ones up top they look less interesting to me because they're just not as complex and developed 
you know, you see a lot more white panels in there mm -hmm. and there's no laces and all these things kind of like were able to happen because the show was delayed for a year due to the COVID. And so um, I had more time to develop the work. And so now I'm doing things like, like this one. I found this box in, a, in the dumpster behind the studio. This is that tequila that George Clooney and his friends started and then sold for some mega huge amount of money. And um, I, I started using uh, honor tassels as laces and you know mixing in other kinds of paper like this gold paper. So, so that this shoe wouldn't have happened or the, the chemical periodic table elements wouldn't have happened a year ago. But since the show has happened, some, some of those, uh, some of my favorites have sold. So uh, I could show you an image of the drawer over here, of oh, some sure. of those, those ones. One of my particular favorites. It was a shoe that I made from a poster <laughs> that I found. Okay, so here's the, this is a cool one. This is an espresso shoe. And I've had, I've worked with Greg Staley, who's a really great photographer. Beautiful. To do these gradation backgrounds. This is the, uh, this is the Audubon Flamingo shoe. And that's kind of a favorite. I, I found that poster uh, in a sale. It wasn't even a sale. It was just a pile of stuff that people were clearing out the basement. And I love how the forms of the bird um, tie in with the forms of the shoe. And it also reinforces that message I have of what the effect of our consumer culture is on the environment like the slim profile of the shoe. And it's so interesting to me because each time I do a shoe, even though I'm using the same templates, I made these prints, I asked, you know, I picked out some of my favorite shoes. And these are earlier shoes, so they don't have the laces, but the Veuve Clicquot was really fun. Very nice. Yeah. Love the color combination. Yeah, I do too. Gosh. I just have always loved that particular orange. It's very distinctive. And it's sort of a lesson of this one is the Special K. <laughs> and of course, Special K, you know, that was Clark Kellogg back in the day at St. John's. He was, that was his nickname when I was in New York. Right? And, uh, and friends of mine, they have teenage boys. And they eat, they went through, they were going through Special K like, you know, some people go through Kleenex. Right. And it has this bit of glossiness to the logo. So that kind of picked up there. And then just like... One of my students asked about if I wanted a, a box of a Krispy Kreme. And so here's the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Yeah, and here's another reason why the shoes are different. I mean, you want to keep that logo intact, right? That sort of bow tie yes. logo they have yes. there. And so I just wrapped it over there like a, like a Velcro. Man, Andy, that's incredible. <laughs> Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. These are all kind of favorites of mine. I see why. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe I'm up to about uh, getting close to 400 of these shoes that wow, I've made. Really? Yeah, it's quite a few. And how long would you say it would take you to um, manufacture? To take to take one shoe, it it sort of depends, but I can. It's going to be less than a day, of course. Um, I would say anywhere from like four to seven hours. Wow. Not bad. Wow. Yeah. Four hours. Oh. That, that actually, It's probably going to be five to eight hours, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And what's the price for a piece of your work? In? Well, um, they, do they vary? No, I, every shoe, no matter what, is, is seven fifty now. Okay. So I figure if, if people can spend less than a thousand dollars to get an original Hello. sculpture, yes, you know, it's, it makes it at least <laughs> somewhat affordable. They started out at 300 and people said, come on, you, you, I mean, I'm happy to, you got to raise it. Yeah, so indeed. I, indeed. I like the, the Keith Haring approach where, you know, people should be able to, to own work without having to, you know, chop off their right arm. Gotcha. Uh -huh. In its own individual self. So it's not like you're going to find them mass produced like, <laughs> like the shoes yes. that you can get anywhere. <laughs> These are one of a kind. So what has happened now is that like people will ask me, you know, can you make me one out of this? Can you make oh, one out so of that? So they want some customization. And they'll give me that. like, oh, someone gave great. me the box that she mm -hmm. got as an anniversary gift. It was a Tiffany perfume set. And I made that Tiffany shoe for her. Wow. Someone's into superheroes. I, I made that. a Spider-Man shoe. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, 
Yeah. And you know, when we were last here, when we first met you, and mm -hmm. you were in the process of doing oh, the comic piece. Yeah, so to yeah. see that uh -huh. actually come together. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I had extra, so I made a pair. That's one of the rare few pairs. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh my God. It's, wow, this is, it blows my mind because the way you were able to come up with the design template, not only that, but each flows so well. Oh, thanks. Like you see how, I mean, how could this not be an actual shoe? <laughs> so, so I found those when I was visiting my son out West in mm -hmm. Colorado mm -hmm. and uh, on the plane trip back, I'm like looking at the back of the seat and those brochures you have for the safety. Oh, right, right, so I said, right, right. Yes. you know what? They're not going to miss three or four of these. I'm going to take these I things. Love <laughs> I love it. So yeah, there we Beautiful. go. Beautiful. And it's like Air Jordan, so why not, oh, right? Oh man, that's incredible. <laughs> the airplane. Yes. It says land. And you got the airplane, the biggest plane there with all the arrows coming out. It's a little bit like your worst fear, you know? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, what do you do mm -hmm, in case mm -hmm. things go down? Yeah. So, oh my God. It just it's sort of incredible. touches a lot of different incredible. things. Incredible. Certain ones can have a little metaphor, or just like I love how you did the plane. Yeah. Piece. They, they like, I did meaning. the. Uh, uh, the Clorox one with, uh, it was right next to the uh, Corona shoe, oh, gotcha. right? Yeah. So it was sort yeah. of, it was kind of a pun, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of mm -hmm. like, of what we're going through now with the bleach and the, and the coronavirus. So um, you can have, you know, it's important to be able to get some laughs out of it once in a while. Indeed. <laughs> um, Man, amazing. Yeah, I, I do I do like the randomness of making it out of whatever happens to fall into your lap. Like for instance, like like these ones. Um, I was living in Annadale, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of families from all over the world there, and they buy a lot of food from H Mart and these international markets. And I just love the graphics on those things. So it just is like it just you know the way they like <laughs> they make this like there's a you know touch up but they make like a crispy a crispy cream <laughs> or a you know some cookie with some gooey weirdness inside of it look like insane you know it's just like so look at that milk splashing right, up you know <laughs> how can you not love this <laughs> yeah, right. how can you not love one thing that we all can identify with is not only your branding but the food component yeah. and then some of these brands are like global like universal like who wouldn't know i see coca-cola puma yeah. This is all over the world globally. Yeah. <laughs> There's not going to be something up here that somebody's not going to be able to recognize. Right. You're going to see something when you be like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Well, a lot of it, you get some nostalgia too. <laughs> because right, people right. are like, oh my gosh, we, we grew up, that's all we ate was these like uh -huh. Super Mario whatever's, <laughs> crispy, crispix, Kellogg's, whatever. And then you get into the beer and alcohol. Yeah. You name it. You got the beer, you got the comics, and the comic <laughs> lover. I mean, it goes on and on. This is so much fun. And <laughs> yeah, that's a Rudy super Pebbles, huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It goes on and on. Yeah, it does. Here's uh, Russell Westbrook. Oh, yes. And uh, that first one I made of Wheaties, it was a Serena Williams. Um, but yeah, it goes. There's a Nike made out of a Nike shoebox. Um, I see Glad up there. <laughs> <laughs> Kool Aid. Wow, Kool Aid, yes. <laughs> Legos. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Well, it's sort of like what you're confronted with when you go into a store. I mean, your eyes are getting mm -hmm. blasted mm -hmm. by colors, mm -hmm. textures. So true. Um, words. It makes. It makes it, you know, it's like why people have a hard time deciding because you're given so much in the way of. We we're so we ha we're so spoiled in a way with that's with choices. True. Very true. So that's why I knew I, I really did want to keep it one shoe, um, and let let the let the sort of materials fly, but keep the form of it consistent. So at least you know there wouldn't be complete complete chaos. <laughs> Indeed. Gosh. Okay, so I guess lastly I'm gonna ask you, Andy, is like where do you see maybe how far would you push your collection? Uh, is it just endless for the most part? I'm gonna take it as far as it, it wants to go. Amazing um, to see it go on. 
I, I do enjoy making them, but um, you know, on a practical level, there's probably it's probably not the best idea just to continue, you know, making these. So I've been trying other things, um, um, but it's a little bit hard to push away from the trough. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Would you say from an idea standpoint, you're always seeing something that's triggering like the next, right. I guess, shoot? <laughs> it's true because it's like, well, someone, people come to me with suggestions or they'll bring me things. I mean, this was, um, Last Christmas, someone brought me all the leftover boxes from whatever their kids got under the tree. So this is a piece of sports equipment with the stadium as the background. And I think it's why it's caught on with people is because it's not just that they're fun to look at, but you do have that backstory behind it. Somehow, uh, when you have an idea, a really good idea, it resonates and it seems to cut across boundaries with mm -hmm. people. They just like, you can explain it in like one or two sentences and they get it right away.